Hey Bulldog families, Mr. August here. With the start of school just around the corner, I thought it would be a good idea to do a couple videos on topics that are important to both parents, students, and for us as a school. And this video is going to be about the things that are even more important during tier two or remote learning. So these are the things that are going to make our students successful and, and things that we need to keep in mind that are maybe a little bit more important or different. So without further ado, let's let's talk through these things. So even before we get started, there's a little ado here. I wanted to bring up some things that I, I think we have to remember. The first one is that tier two is temporary. This is not going to be the way things are forever. We have to kind of have that mindset of, okay, what's the best possible scenario for this and how do we make this time be as efficient and effective as possible? To that point though, tier two is different, but teaching is teaching and learning is learning. And a lot of what's going to happen this year is, is going to be really, really familiar to families and students. So we just kind of have to keep that in mind. Although it's different and it's a change, it's not a complete 180. So let's talk a little bit about those differences. I think from the spring, families kind of got a taste of remote learning. And, and I'm here to say that what we're doing now is different from the remote learning that we did in spring in, in a bunch of different ways. One is that attendance matters now. So just like regular school, students need to be there. Additionally, we are going to be grading students and you know it's going to be a regular class with all the, the fixings of a regular class, including assessments and, and final grades. The thing I, I want you guys to know at home is um, we have taken what we've learned from the spring and spent a lot of time working hard to to get up to speed on what works for remote learning so not just the teaching staff have been in over the summers our instructional coaches have been working hard the admins been working hard the entire districts have been working hard to make sure that we're safe and that we have everything uh, we could possibly need to make this successful we've done two summer trainings that a large majority of our staff was able to come in on their own time um, to, to, to learn because they're that committed to, to making this work. We also, uh, a, about a week and a half ago, did a, a model lesson where we brought in actual students and three of our teachers simulated a day. And, and that really helped us figure out uh, a variety of things, what works, what doesn't work, what do we need to spend more time on <clears throat> during our in-service time. The big thing I want people to, to understand and, and what, what we stress uh, with, with the staff and everywhere in the district is, you know, we can use this time to get better. Um, there, there are some things that, that Tier 2 can teach us and skills that, that we can learn that translate uh, really well back to when things go back to more traditional. And, and you know, we've looked at this time as, as a time of opportunity and, and a time for us to grow you know, both as individual educators, but also as a district. And, and my final point is to, you know, before we get started, is to remember that we're all in this together. We're all on the same team and uh, it, it's going to be a, a different but, but great year. So the number one thing that I think is really important that families and students understand about remote learning is that organization is really one of the most important things. You know, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult because you're not going to see your teacher every day, but staying organized, getting organized, being uh, in communication with your teacher, understanding deadlines, knowing when the, you know there, there are events coming up, all of that is now more critical because you know in the past you'd be able to see your teacher every day, um, and even though we have flex time and virtual time, you know the the number one thing that, that I, I found in researching what makes remote learning and, and having experienced it myself is you know that frustration kids might have and being able to locate resources or knowing when things are due so it's really important that we spend time making sure that things are clear and 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 crystal uh clear for our our students and, and we're going to do that through our learning uh, management system, which, you know, all the teachers are going to be using Google Classroom. And we've tried to make as much consistency in the use of it so that students aren't trying to guess what's on the teacher's mind in terms of where they put stuff. Um, 
secondarily, and, and I think this is a, a, something that you should mark on your calendars, September 2nd, we're going to have a virtual Meet the Teachers Night. So, uh, you know, I'll be sending out links and details, but basically you're going to follow your student's schedule uh, and have some time to meet with the teacher where uh, they're going to explain, you know, the best way to communicate, how they're going to commun communicate, how they're going to put deadlines up, how students can, can turn in assignments, get really all that organizational stuff for you as a parent to know uh, to be able to support your child. Other supports that we have for organization are our Friday sessions are going to be about um, communicating what's due, when it's due, where things are located. Keeping kids organized is part of what that Friday virtual session is about. Uh, we will have flex times. You know, these are kind of like uh, study halls, but but with more intention, where teachers can call students or uh, students can can go to teachers that they need help with. Um, to stay and get organized. Uh, we also have some features um, called guardian summaries that, that we're looking to, to maybe implement, which would be about uh, you getting as a parent a summary out of Google Classroom of, of uh, your students' progress and, and deadlines, as well as sharing the, the calendars for these classrooms with you. The, the next thing that's really, really important, and, and this is one that doesn't really change, is that showing up is really important. You know, one of the, the biggest uh, indicators of a student's success is attendance, whether it's traditional or in remote. You know, being here, being in class, there's no substitute for it, um, and and it just is is really the, the foundation of of you know a successful uh, career at a high school. The other thing is being on time. Um, again, not different. Uh, showing up on time, whether you're at school or a job, is is critical. It's going to be even more critical uh, in in remote learning because you know these classes are going to start on time, and and you don't want to be missed out. Or, and you know the virtual world can be a little tougher to to get up to speed because you can't really turn and ask a a, a friend to point out where you are. Um, so get get there on time. Um, you know, from my own children's experience, I know that this whole COVID time has really interrupted their sleeping patterns and, and shifted. Uh, <clears throat> they stay up late and they, you know, they go to bed late, uh, they wake up late. So just, just something to think about as we begin to get closer to the school year is thinking about you know, and, and knowing your students' uh, sleep patterns and starting to ease it back to a, uh, to a more traditional or early to rise, early to bed. Uh, kind of scenario. Um, and the last thing goes without saying is, and I'll talk a little bit more about that is, you know, showing up and being engaged is really what we're talking about. Uh, you know, drinking in your own learning and not just sitting there passively. Uh, the third thing that's going to be critical, and it goes kind of along with organization, is time management. So in a traditional setting, you know, it's a, it's a good routine. Kids thrive on routine. Everybody thrives on routine. Uh, we'll have a routine, but it will be a little bit more flexible. So kids are going to have to, and parents to support them, are going to have to deal with that and, and really learn to how to manage their time. Um, and that may mean creating their own routines at home, balancing schedules between work and you know, caring for siblings and, and the, the myriad of things that teenagers are into. Uh, you know, we, we got to balance all that, you know. I would strongly encourage you to, to, to set those routines and, and get, get a rhythm going with your student. I think that would be tremendously important. Uh, in addition, you know, knowing when deadlines are for assignments um, and, and then backwards planning to how much time do I need to have to get this done? You know, we, we don't want our kids, and it's part of the reason why we went to a block uh, was that they had fewer classes so that they could concentrate on, on doing really well within those four classes they might have. This one's really important as well. Um, you know, remote learning is going to require that, that kids own uh, more of their learning. You know, so, you know, it, in a traditional setting, you can come into a classroom and, and, and maybe be passive because, you know, you've got all this time with your teacher. Remote learning is going to require that, that students be more active participants in their own education. You know, they're going to have to, uh, they're going to, have to, to get out of the cart and start pushing a little bit when it comes to uh, you know, being a part of the class. 
I would encourage you and, and, and students to think like a partner. Um, you know, we'd like to believe we're partners with, with families and students before. It's really important that we, we, we leverage that partnership and that teach, teachers and students work together collaboratively to make this successful. So, uh, you know, students are going to have to see themselves as participants in the class and, and should, should go uh, really out of their way to think about how they can interact with their teacher because it's not just going to be a one-way street like it might be in a traditional class. They, they need to make it a two-way street. Uh, I'd like to sum that all up by saying, you know, to be successful in remote learning, kids need to be their own boss. They've got to, to organize themselves. They've got to own it. Um, you know, if, if you own a business, then, then, you know, you're really vested in it. It's success. And, and you know, they've got to be, they've got to be that in order for this to work uh, as well as it can for them. The last one I think is probably the most important, and, and that's that, you know, relationships matter. You know, kids learn best when they're connected to each other and their teachers. So, you know, we, we have taken upon ourselves to recognize that, that we've got to spend time as a school building those relationships. And that takes some time. Um, and it, it may be a little more challenging with remote learning, but, but it's not impossible. And we're going to be intentional about doing that. You know, so th you know, the first step in that is to recognize that you know the the impact of closing of school last year had on kids. You know it's, it's kind of a traumatic event. So so you know we've have some plans in place and some trainings in place for for our teachers to be able to s support our students through that. Um, you know it, it, that's known as a social emotional learning, and that's going to be embedded in different parts of our day. We're going to start every day in advisement um, where the, you know, the teacher and the students have been together for a while and uh, that, that relationship has time to grow. That'll be a time for check-ins, uh, to talk about how things are going, uh, really leverage that time to support our kids. Uh, additionally, I mentioned on, you know, already mentioned Fridays. Uh, that's a time where, you know, classes can build, uh, build relationships as well. Um, we are going to be sending out a survey to all students about two weeks prior to the start of the school to kind of see where they are, how they're feeling, what's on their minds, uh, and, and that will help guide our, our, uh, our plan for supporting them. So that, that's what I have. Um, I, I, again, I just want to stress that you know, we're all on the same team and, and you know, we're really, really excited to, to start the school year. We've missed seeing your kids. Um, and, and can't wait to get back at it. So thanks and uh, have a great day.